okay, this this meeting will be recorded so that we can get it to all the attendees later and anyone who um, missed out today. Um, but I first want to welcome our tra- Freedom Travel Systems team. So on the call today, we have Eli Facenda, who's the founder of Freedom Travel Systems, and we also have Anish, who is part of the Freedom, Freedom Travel Systems team. Um, Eli is a passionate entrepreneur and seasoned traveler who has mastered the art of leveraging credit cards for unforgettable travel experiences. With a strategic mindset and a knack for maximizing opportunities, Eli knows how to unlock the full potential of credit cards to create extraordinary journeys. Join Eli as he shares his expertise and reveals a five-step process to transform your approach to travel, opening doors to a world of limitless possibilities. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Eli. And just as a side note, if you have any questions um, during the presentation, feel free to ask that in the chat and we will go over those during Q&A after. Um, You can also unmute yourself after the presentation's done. So whichever you prefer is great. So Eli, we'll turn the time over to you. Awesome. Skylar, thank you so much. Uh, Tian, thank you for making this happen as well. And wow, I am excited to be here. We are going to cover some really, really cool stuff. I think um, this tends to be an area that everyone's somewhat interested in. Sometimes there's varying levels of kind of education in this area coming into a call like this. And what we're going to do is make this extremely action oriented and engaging for you too. So there's going to be a lot of opportunity for questions. Um, so don't hesitate. Anything specific to you, general points, questions, travel, credit, credit stuff, you can ask away on all that stuff. Um, but most importantly, I want to make this very applicable and actionable. So there's going to be action steps that we have and some things that we're going to ask for some of your engagement. But first thing off the bat, um, again, excited to be here. I'm coming at you from Austin, Texas. So if anyone else is down here, would love to obviously connect in person if there's any opportunities there and, and happy to uh, to share some information about our contact later on. But who here on this call has seen some of this stuff where you're like seeing people maybe on social media or you've heard about it or you've read the points guy and you're like, wait, there's people in overwater villas at the, in you know, at the Ritz Carlton in the Maldives or flying Singapore suites where there's a bed that comes out of the wall. And these are like $4,000 hotel nights, $10,000 flights, and they're doing it for free basically, right? Some of you have probably used points, I'm sure. But how many have been like confused as that? Like, okay, I don't understand how this is working. Like this doesn't make any sense, right? You look at something like this and you're thinking, okay, this must be like a sponsored paid thing. And maybe not realizing fully that like, oh, there's people that are out there travel hacking, right? They're using points. They're using the money they're already spending and creating experiences like this, right? So I'm curious to know. I see a couple people raising their hand and uh, and and nodding on that one, which is good. And honestly, that's how uh, I was for a long time as well. So I want to give you guys a little bit of background on how I got into this. And if you've ever seen the movie Bridesmaids, it kind of felt like this, right? Where, you know, I was sitting, you know, trying to create experiences in my life, trying to travel, and I just didn't have any really good resources or ways to do it. Very different from maybe the position that that uh, that a lot of us on this call are in now, where, yeah, you have a business, you have a big vision, you have a lot of momentum in your life, clearly, or you wouldn't be here. But when I started out, I came into this from a different reason, right? It was like, I had friends that were going to Wall Street. I was fresh out of college. I was in the entrepreneurial world, and I wanted to travel with them. And they were making like five times more than I was. And so I needed a better strategy. Credit card points ended up being that strategy. I stumbled into it. And I'll remember, you know, I remember my first ever big international trip. This was the game changer. And everyone that gets hooked in this stuff, there's a game changer moment. And, and maybe you've had one yourself. But I was flying over to, to London, actually, for a conference. And I remember I was making around probably thirty to $35,000 a year at this point. And I boarded the plane. And for the first time in my life, they told me to turn left instead of turning right, right? Meaning go to business and first class instead of going to economy. And I was like, this is awesome. I don't know what to do. I feel so out of place. And I sat down, got the champagne, you know, the whole deal. And I remember thinking, wow, this is a $6,000 ticket, which is like basically a fifth of my income. And I paid $6 for it. And I was like, I've hacked the world. I was like, I have figured everything out in life. So I needed to learn more. So I, I went, went down the rabbit hole and I had no intentions of this turning into a business or a brand or anything that we're going to cover here today. But it was just a passion for travel, a strong desire to want to make something happen. And really, you know, I had a mentor that once told me, you don't need money, you need a better strategy. And I was like, that's interesting. Let me see how I can apply that here. So, um, you know, eight years later, here we are. Uh, this is my second company in the travel industry. I've uh, got another company that I still part run as well, where we take sports, uh, youth sports teams on international tours. So I've been in the travel industry for a while. I visited 42 countries, some of them, you know, 10 or 12 times. We got some definite favorites in that. And I'm getting, you know, around 100 to $150,000 a year of free travel while spending around, you know, around twenty five dollars to $30,000 a month in my business. So not a crazy amount of spend, 
to get that kind of travel, which we're going to cover for you guys. So um, this is, again, going to be how do we create the travel lifestyle that we want? Or also think about this from a cost cutting perspective within the business from the money that you're already spending. This is my favorite part of why this works. You're already, if you're on this call, you are already doing the hardest part of what's required to make this amazing for you. You're spending a decent amount of money. Okay. As business owners, we obviously have a lot more spend than the kind of general consumer, which creates so much more leverage to do this. Now, I will say when I first started out, right, I didn't have a big business. I was spending like 1500 to 2000 a month on credit cards max. And I was still getting multiple five figures of travel value because I was really good with what I was doing. So even if your business isn't spending a crazy amount now or, or, or won't in the future, depending on what kind of um, business you're in and industry you're in, you can still do a lot with your personal spend too. So I want to make sure to cover that um, in this as we go. So action item number one, I want to know what your bucket list trips are. So we've got um, uh, a little way to, to feedback on that. And we'll kind of play off of this as we go. But give yourself permission to think big. Like, what are the what are the destinations, right? Do you want to go to Africa for a safari? Have you always wanted to go to Japan and see the cherry blossoms? Have you wanted to go to Carnival in in uh, Brazil? Have you wanted to go see the running of the bulls in Spain or Oktoberfest in Germany? Or you know, go check out Dubai and see like the the glitz and glam, or go to India or something like that. That's going to be a really unique experience. Or do you have family that you want to take on these trips? I'd love to know. Go ahead and chat some of those in. I want to see what kind of interesting destinations and, and trips around the world that people are really intrigued by. Um, for myself, my biggest bucket list trip right now is, is an African safari. I did kind of a partial one once, and I really want to go back and do a two week trip there. And they just opened a new resort actually in Kenya. Marriott just did with, which has like an incredible experience available for that kind of thing. So Maldives, beautiful. Skylar, appreciate that coming in. Uh, and, uh, dive the great barrier reef. Amazing. Kevin, that's a, that's obviously a big one. Going to Australia is a huge opportunity to use points because the, the retail ticket prices that are obviously Pretty, pretty hefty. Uh, Bali, huge one, very big fan favorite. Um, one of my favorite ways to do that would be to fly a really nice um, carrier through either Hong Kong, like Cathay Pacific, or going through Japan, which we'll talk about, ANA and Japan Airlines. A lot of these Asian, European, and Middle Eastern carriers are going to have a much better travel experience when you actually get to fly them over American operators. So little tip, if you didn't know that, I would definitely always fly those. Uh, Sue's coming in with quite a few, Tahiti, India, Australia, New Zealand. Beautiful. That would be one big, awesome trip considering you're going all the way to that part of the world. Um, Japan, uh, Roselle says, uh, says everywhere. I like that destination too. For Roselle, you may not know, there's a thing called the round the world ticket as well. It's kind of a complicated process, but there's ways to actually do, um, for like a fraction of what it would normally cost to basically start on one part of the world and you can circumvent the entire globe on pretty much one itinerary using just a couple hundred thousand points. Lithuania, that would be very cool. India for business. Um, awesome, guys. Awesome. Yeah, keep it rolling in there. I'd love to continue to check some of those out and we can hopefully at the end get into some of those specifics. But um, I like to set a vision of like, what is this actually going to do for us first? You know, what are the experiences? Who are we going to go with? Because at the end of the day, there's travel for business, which is which is a great thing in its own. But at the end of the day, my passion in travel and, and part of what I love about this is it opens the door to take the trips and the experiences that we've always wanted to do with people that we really care about and not have to think about really the cost component, which is really nice. Um, so when you have that opportunity, it enables us to do more of the things in life that we already want to do, but we couldn't quite justify, right? And so we'll get into some of that in a minute. But here's what I want to do. First, um, really kind of homework assignment, order of action in terms of something that you guys are going to be able to do right now to start to see the value in this for yourself. Okay, so we're gonna what we're gonna do is calculate your estimated, okay, your estimated annual travel value. So what this really is, is how much, like you kind of, until you can take a look at this, you don't really know how much you're leaving on the table, right? None of us do, it's definitely not taught in school. It's not something most people stop to think about, right? We might think, okay, we have a 2% cash back card. That's what I currently get or something. That's a good baseline. But what could I be getting? What should I be getting? And that's what we're gonna calculate. So the first thing, is I want to know what your monthly spend is roughly, right? So if you pop in the poll and say, okay, what are you spending between business and personal on cards? Throw that in there. I'd love to see. We can work off of some of that as well. That'd be great to be able to get some of that information. So go ahead. I'll give everyone a moment to pull that in. And this is again, going to be existing credit card spend. So if you have payroll and it's not on a card, don't include that. But if you're spending you know, $10,000 or $5,000 at home for family expenses and stuff, and those are on cards, and do include that because that's a personal expense. Okay. So I do want to be able to uh, give everyone a moment here. I think we should have that information yeah. in. Just looking back at some of the destinations. Uh, I just traveled to California, then Colorado, uh, free from points collected. Nice, Sue. That's awesome. 
And Larry said Croatia, Italy, and Greece. Heck of a European trip, right, Larry? That'll be a good one. Um, cool. Okay, cool. So great. I got the got the range here. So it looks like we got a good spread of people, um, mostly in the 10K a month range, a good, a good amount in the 10 to 30K, and then a few that are north of that. Awesome. So we'll work off of that, guys. And again, the more you spend, the easier it gets. The less you spend, the more levers you want to pull on. But you don't have to do anything crazy to make this all work. Um, and that's, that's again, the beauty of it. So let's get into some of these numbers here. Okay, so this formula is going to basically be as follows, right? You're going to take your monthly card. I'm going to walk you through this. Your monthly card spend times 12. And I'm going to give you an example. So you're going to take your monthly card spend, multiply that times 12 to get your annual spend. Okay. Then you're going to take your annual spend and multiply that times two and a half. Now, two and a half is what we would consider your ideal target for every dollar that you spend. You want to earn at least two and a half points for every dollar. Okay. So now you have what your target points earning would be on the year. So, you know, we'll get into the examples, but basically that's your next step, right? The amount you're spending times two and a half is going to get you your target amount of points per year. Now you take that target number of points and you would multiply it by three cents for each point. Okay. So if you had, if it was a million points was the number times three cents would be $30,000. Okay. So that's your total target redemption value. So that means like when you're redeeming points, what's your annual value of point redemption going to be? Okay. The next step is you're going to take your annual trips, the number of annual trips and multiply that times about 400. Okay, and this is going to be your free travel benefits. So these are things like lounge access, upgrades, free breakfast, uh, free bags, things that you're going to get when you have status and you have the right cards that will give you additional value on your trips that you don't have to pay for because you're just using the right cards and you're spending it effectively. Okay, so 400 is an estimate. That's obviously a very fluctuating thing. And some, you know, if you do a three-week trip through Europe, it might be more like $3,000 or more. If you just do a quick trip between New York to Miami or something for a work trip, it might not be 400. But we're going to take an aggregate based off of what we've seen with clients. Okay. Um, and then what we're going to do is combine our total redemption value with the free travel benefits. And that's how you get your total annual value to give you an estimate of like what could slash should you be getting. Um, now, again, at the end, we'll talk about ways to include payroll or like rent on cards as well, if you have interest in that. Okay. So for an example, like mine, you know, I actually get more than this because I'm really effective with uh there's some strategies that i'm deploying to earn more points and to really leverage status and i get usually pretty solid value out of the points but as a baseline if someone was in my shoes that was new to this this would be a good example so thirty thousand a month between business and personal spend okay times 12 so that's three hundred and sixty thousand dollars a year okay three hundred and sixty thousand dollars a year times two and a half points for every dollar equals nine hundred thousand total points okay so I would know, okay, I'm aiming to earn around close to a million points a year based off of my spending. Again, there's ways to earn even more, but that's like a good kind of target, okay? So 900,000 points. And then if I was able to get three cents from each point that I get, that would yield $27,000 worth of redemption value. So I'd be redeeming those 900,000 points for about $27,000 worth of travel, okay? And then for me, I take more or less two trips a year, you know, a little more if you kind of tie it all in. So 25 trips times around $400, that'd be another $10,000 of like additional benefits, upgrades, free breakfast, meals in the lounges, free baggage, that kind of stuff. Okay. So that would yield me a total of $37,000 of total annual value. So that's why I know like in a base case, someone in my shoes, I should be getting at least 37,000. Now, again, like the average we get for clients when we work them directly is around four to five cents per point. So we're getting even better, but three cents for each point, which we're going to get into is a reasonable target. And if you're confused by what I mean with cents per point, what are you talking about? We're going to get there. So don't worry. I just want you guys to lock in on first, dream types of trips. Second, how much value am I leaving on the table? Because that creates a clear vision and reason to want to understand the stuff a little more. Otherwise, we're kind of just drifting through it. So uh, awesome, awesome, awesome. Cool. Um, just looking at the chat there. Great. So again, if you need to go back, this will be um, recorded so you guys can go back, but just Make sure to picture, take a picture of that, write that down, and you want to calculate that. Okay, if you have your number, I'm, I'm interested to hear in the chat as well. If you want to throw that in there, awesome. If you know what you could be getting, that'd be great, and uh, we'll continue forward. Okay, now the last kind of action step before we dive into more of the how does this work is what we want to basically think about as, as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, as someone who's tracking things, right? We're, we're typically numbers and data driven. So one of the K, uh, uh, main KPIs, like the thing where we really want to pay attention to is return on spend. So if you have a 2% cash back card, you're getting 2% return 
return on every dollar you spend. Okay. If we have the right strategies, nice. Phil, you put in 50K plus. That's awesome. Phil, great, great stuff, man. You are, you're looking at a great opportunity there. Um, and that's annual, right? Which is the beauty of this. It's like that adds up quick, uh, quick to quite a bit. So 2% return on spend, right? So that would basically be your total annual value divided by the number of annual, uh, divided by the actual amount of card spend. So in this case, if, again, uh, in my case, that's just say 37,000, excuse me, out of 360K, not 36,000, obviously, but that would be about 10% return, more or less. And so if I were to compare that to the industry standard of a 2% cash back card, clearly that's pretty good. 5X isn't bad when it comes to something that's pretty much almost feels like free money. It feels kind of like passive income almost. You're just increasing the amount you get back for every dollar that you spend. Okay. Um, so great. Awesome. Awesome. So we'll continue on. Hopefully you guys got to write some of that stuff down and, and think about that. So we're going to dive into how this works. It might feel a little bit like this. Okay. This was actually at a, uh, one of the Hyatt properties down in, uh, in Cabo. I was just having fun in one of the, uh, spots, but it might feel a little bit like drinking from a fire hose. Okay. We're going to cover a lot. Some of this stuff is going to be very applicable to you. Some of it might be, uh, something that's like good to know, but save it for later. So try to find the specific nuggets that are going to be really, really relevant for you. And we'll cover again some kind of broader strategies that are applicable to everybody. We're going to cover what's possible, how the game works. We'll cover what to like the do's and don'ts, um, how anyone here can earn millions of points, how to use the points for the best value. This is probably the most important piece. And then we're going to give you just a lineup of easy, immediate, actionable wins that you could do tomorrow to get several thousand dollars worth of value. Okay. So these should be some really easy layups for anybody on this call, no matter how big or small your business is. Okay. Um, most people, by the way, they, what they miss, and this is they don't understand it. So they never really took a look. They're not optimizing what's possible. And then the last piece is they don't have a system. So that's important too. We're going to cover how do you actually systemize this so that when you are going to do it, you can do it in a way that's simple. You can do it in a way where it's effective and you're, easy, you're actually able to implement this rather than it becoming some sort of, you know, another thing on the to-do list that takes up a ton of time. We No one here wants to do that. So um, we'll do that. And starting off on what's possible, like we talked about, the return on spend, right? Which is the third point there. So getting it as a higher value back for every dollar that you spend being kind of a smart business owner in that sense. We also talked about starting to take some of your dream trips. Now, one of the beauties, depending on how your business is structured, right? Depending on your funding and how, how it's working with the capital you're raising, depending on what stage you're in, all that stuff. In some cases, you may not be allowed to put um, a lot of the company's expenses on cards that are going to generate you points, right? You may not have uh, what's called small business cards, which are business cards, but the points go to you, right? Where you're the personal guarantor and the points go to you as the individual. You may not have that. But if you do, if you do have that situation, one of the many beauties of this is that the points earnings you can use for tax-free trips, right? They're, the, the points are technically after tax. So you could essentially take a fifteen dollars to $20,000 trip that typically you'd have to maybe take a distribution or you know whatever compensation you're getting from your company, pay tax on that and then spend it for the trip. If you use points, no tax implications. So you can use them even if they're generated from the business, which is a, gr a great kind of benefit, right? Owner's benefit if you can't, if you can leverage that. Um, if you're someone who can't do that, but you're still traveling a good amount, right? There's a lot of ways to optimize how you book the travel, how you pay for the travel, how you credit your miles. We can get into all that stuff too, okay? So that's going to be a factor as well. Um, obviously, you can get higher end luxury travel without paying for it. So if you're flying a lot in an economy, it means you can go to first class without paying for it. If you're flying maybe business or first class overseas, you could start to have the more lavish experiences that are like really big wow factors, right? If you're going to the Maldives or through Asia, right? You could stay at overwater villas instead of just like a you know nicer hotel that's on the island, stuff like that. One of the last things that I just like to mention to people is you can actually use these points as a way to gift to team members or anyone really that you want to provide value to. Um, there's been a number of our clients that have come in and they've got a big team, they have maybe more points than they can use, or they're not traveling a lot or whatever it may be. And for each quarter, they send their top performer on a big trip. So they have like a catalog that we've helped them build out. And they'll say, hey, pick, you know, one of these four, Dubai, Paris, you know, Hong Kong, South America, somewhere, which one do you want to do? And then basically can use the points for a team member like that. So kind of some cool ways to leverage that to create some amazing experiences that, you know, a team member or maybe an investor or whoever would uh would really benefit from that they may not uh they may not see the same kind of emotional feel from just a cash bonus for example so kind of a cool thing so what kind of luxury experiences are example are, are, are available then these are just some fun ones that we like to do and uh you'll see this gentleman in some of the other pictures that's my business partner tommy lonergan who's uh 
really one of the top points experts on the planet, honestly, phenomenal, phenomenal guy when it comes to this. But um, for example, Lufthansa first class in the top left, they'll drive you onto the tarmac in a Porsche. They have an entire separate terminal for the first class uh, passengers. So it's, you don't even go through the main security or anything. You just go to a first class terminal, drive you onto the Porsche, onto the tarmac or in a Porsche, onto the tarmac. Uh, you've got JetBlue uh, studio suites right there, which is a phenomenal experience for domestic travel. It's my favorite domestic first class. You're pretty much only going to see that primarily on uh, transcontinental routes. So a lot of California to Florida, New York, Boston, that kind of stuff. You're not going to see a ton other than that, uh, maybe a couple of like Caribbean routes and stuff, but that's, that's primarily where you're going to see that route. So it's not a ton of routing, but it is a great experience if you can, if you can get it. Um, things like the Overwater Villas in the Maldives, right? Uh, like the Waldorf Astoria, an amazing Hilton property or Bora Bora, St. Regis, that's a Marriott property. Or uh, uh, if you fly Emirates, you can go first class over to Dubai. They actually fly that from New York to Milan as well. And you could be flying where you get a shower on board. Uh, this was a really fun one. You know, is a shower necessary on a flight? Absolutely not. Is it a good experience? Heck yeah. Uh, so this was a long flight. We had had a few drinks and I was like, you know, ready to land. And we still had a six hour flight left. And uh, I woke up and the flight attendant was like, Mr. Vicenda, your shower's ready. And I was like, I'm not feeling great. But if you get me an espresso martini, I'll be good as new. So that was just a fun kind of thing that became available where, you know, I didn't have to pay for that um, out of pocket very much. And was able to have an experience that I otherwise would have never, never wanted to pay for. Um, so those are the kinds of things that uh, can become available for you. Now, you can also do domestic travel. It can also be economy. It doesn't really matter. It's really what's important for you. Uh, so the three key steps here, right at the bottom is where I want to focus your attention. Your goal is really to optimize earning the right points, earning tons of them, and then get good value out of them. So that's going to be the key idea here that you really want to focus on. Okay. Uh, and there's three main, then we're going to get into some of the, how does this work piece? There's three main types of points. There's bank points that are not transferable. Okay. There's loyalty points, which are airline miles and hotel points. So Hilton points, Marriott points, Hyatt points, United miles, American miles, British Airways, obvious, uh, Air Canada, aeroplane points, stuff like that. Those are going to be your airline uh, and hotel loyalty points. And then you've got what we call transferable bank points. Now, this is where you want to go. Okay. So if you're thinking about what kind of cards do I want to get? personal, business. These are the cards, ideally. Um, now, once you expand into this a little bit deeper, or if you're going for status, it may make sense to get some of the loyalty point cards, like a United card, an American card, that kind of stuff. But starting out, off the bat, you want to be earning at least several hundred thousand to ideally maybe even a couple million of the points I'm talking about on the right part of the screen here, Chase, Amex, Capital One, and City. Okay. So if, you're, if you currently have cards that earn points with Wells Fargo, PNC, US Bank, Bank of America, where you're getting points there, they cannot do the same things that I'm about to show you with these other programs, okay? Um, if you're earning cash back, there's obviously a cap on that. You can't earn much there. Um, and so that's where you want to start. And the reason is, is because these points can convert from the banks into airline and hotel loyalty programs. Now, they have all these cool relationships, which we're going to get into, but these are the four. There's also one more called Built now, which is a newer one, but it's a smaller program. They really just have one card. Uh, which is good for rent. But these four programs are going to be your heavy spenders for pretty much everything in your business, everything personally. And what it does is it allows you to get arbitrage. This is the whole reason this even industry or concept even exists is because there's really arbitrage from the way that you can use points to transfer them to the airlines uh, compared to what you'd get if you were going directly to like the bank's travel site. Okay, so we're going to show you examples of that in a moment. Uh, but this would be an example of some of the, the partners, right? So American Express has partners with all sorts of different uh, airlines and hotels. And you want to think of these each as a currency. Okay, so Amex points are like a currency. Virgin Miles are a currency. Hilton points are like a currency. And once you kind of have a sense of how this works, you'll know, okay, converting my Amex points to Flying Blue would be great for certain things. Converting them to Marriott might be good in some situations, but it's not optimal in a lot of others for certain reasons. But you kind of get a sense of, okay, there's different airlines that I could use points on that are partners with Amex. How do I optimize that? Okay. So now that we know, okay, so these four points programs are the ones we want to focus on. We've got step one. How, what types of points to earn? So this is this is it, right? Ideally, if you're just starting out, I typically recommend Chase or Amex are the first two. Capital One would be next. City would probably be last. But um, honestly, depending on where you are, what you fly, all that stuff, it can vary. But those are the top two that I typically recommend to start with. Now, now that you know, okay, what kind of points I want to earn, how do I maximize the amount that I'm earning? So this would be how you get sign-up bonuses, 
right? So you're going to get X amount of dollars for spending Y in the first 90 days of a new card, right? We've all seen those promotions. You can get those, get 50, 60, 100, sometimes 150,000 points just for opening the card. That's an obvious big win. But the biggest thing really over time is how do you maximize your everyday spending? How do you make sure that every time you go to pay for social media ads, you pay for shipping or uh, you know office supplies, or you go to, out to a restaurant, you go buy groceries or you go buy gas. How do you make sure that you're getting at least two, three, four, sometimes five to 10 points for every dollar that you're spending? Okay. This is one of the biggest game changers is getting the right cards on the right expenses. That will be a big difference maker for you. Okay. And the last one is going to be, you can earn some additional points through things like shopping portals, things like referral bonuses, things like retention bonuses, which is where you might call up Amex, for example, and say, Hey, I was thinking about canceling the card. Do you have any benefits for card members that have been here for three years? They'll say, you know what? You've been great. If you spend another thousand dollars in the next 90 days, we'll give you another 20,000 points, um, you know, to justify the annual fee. It's like, cool, great. I'll keep it. You get that. You get an extra 20,000. I have an assistant that will go through and, and kind of, you know, contact the banks and ask for, ask for those kinds of things. So I set up once and I don't do it on my own anymore. But that will usually earn me a couple hundred thousand points a year. The referrals as well, obviously, are a big one too. So now if you want to think about how do you craft like the perfect card strategy? So how do you think about the best ones? We'll obviously get into Q&A. But if you wanted to do this on your own tomorrow, here's kind of the criteria you want to think about. What's your desired outcome? Is it about big international trips? Is it about consistent domestic trips? Am I just trying to get upgrades for conferences? Like, what do you want? Do you just want hotel stays? You don't fly a lot, but you do a lot of hotels or reciprocal. You do only Airbnb or whatever, and you you fly a ton. Okay, so you want to think about your desired outcome. Then you want to think, what are the top two to three points for you to earn? So I already mentioned Chase and Amex are typically really good, but if you are going for status and you, you, know, you live in Dallas and you're flying American a lot and you're going for status, getting some American cards will, will make sense, right? That that makes sense. So that would be kind of a thing to think about there. What are the easiest bonuses to get? So if you want fast wins, how do you get the cards that are going to give you 100,000 points right away so you can just get momentum and get that going? And then which cards earn the most category bonuses on the types of purchases that I want? So pretty simple. And then the last thing would be, now how do I get the perks and status benefits that are kind of highest leverage or lowest hanging fruit for me? Okay, so Everyone on here, you know, lounge access, TSA pre-check, global entry, some sort of status. That should be a pretty big layup for most people here, which we'll cover at the end. But those are the kinds of things that you want to be thinking about. Now, um, what we're going to cover next is now that we've got the right type of points, we've got the right cards that are earning us the most points possible, right? If we go back to the formula in the beginning, this is like, you kind of now know, okay, so if I did this, I could earn 900,000 chase points a year. So now how do you take those points and get crazy value out of it. That's This is the, the secret sauce. This is the stuff that, honestly, us as a business, this is why we exist because we're able to do this really, really well. Um, it's the most complicated part, but it's also the piece that if you nail it once, it creates the biggest game changer effect for you that you're going to get hooked on, okay? So you don't need to memorize this or even really ever look at this again. It's a crazy looking map, but the thing that you just need to know about this is the the banks that have these transfer partners, it kind of is a big jumble of partnerships. So you've got Chase, Amex, City, and Capital One. And what you can do is you can convert these points into different airlines, and then they're a part of alliances, right? So you'll see certain airlines don't have transfer partners from these main banks. Um, technically, you can convert Marriott points into a lot of airlines. It's just not a good deal. So you can kind of ignore that part. But off of these four, you'll see like Lufthansa doesn't partner with any of them. So what could you do if you wanted to book a Lufthansa flight? Well, since they're in the Star Alliance, which is this little logo here, you could maybe convert your points to Avianca or to Air Canada because they're partners with, with Lufthansa. And those are both partners with American Express, for example. Okay. So that's helpful to understand. Not every airline is a part of an alliance. Like you won't see Emirates on here, which is probably my favorite airline. So uh, it's good to know, like, okay, there's might be some times where I'm not going to see them here. And there's other ways to leverage partnerships on those. But uh, for the most part, this is a good way to get a sense. You'll get one of the main US flagship carriers in each the alliance of the alliances, the Star Alliance has United, One World has uh, American, and Sky Team has Delta, right? So those are the kind of airlines that have the right partnerships to to leverage. Okay, so now again, thinking about how we maximize the value of the points, we first need to know well how much is a point supposed to be worth? Like I don't understand. So the base value, um, uh, I'm just looking at Roselle. Okay, cool. Yeah, we'll get we'll get to some of those tools Roselle as well. How to make a sheet out of that. Um, so the base value of a point, you want to think in, in the standard baseline value for most points is one cent. 
So if you have Amex points or you have Chase points and you're redeeming them for statement credits or you're going through like the Chase travel portal or the Amex travel portal to book your trips, you're going to get a fixed value on your points of one cent per point. So that's that's baseline. Okay. So again, if you had a card that earned two points for every dollar and you got one cent per point, that's going to be 2%. Pretty simple math right there. So that's how we think about the return. So if you have um, you know, a one cent per point baseline, the question is how do we increase that? Okay, we need to be able to, to know what we're aiming for. So that's where you get what's called your cent per point. So that's going to be where you just take the cash cost of something and you divide it by the number of required points. Okay, so if a trip was 50, this is a real example. That's why the number is so obscure, right? If there was a trip that was $5,237, uh, I think this is a, a business class trip to Europe, and you went through Amex Travel or Chase Travel, okay, they're going to give you one cent per point. So that trip is going to cost 523,700 points. Pretty simple. Okay. If you did the transfer strategy, it would probably be something like 75,000 points. Like in this example, it was. That's almost 7x the value that you're getting compared to Chase Travel. Okay, so you could fly seven of you for the same amount of points or do seven one-way tickets. Okay, that's pretty epic value, right? Now, the reason this works, just so you understand, is basically the banks like Amex Travel, Chase Travel, they're what's called an online travel agency. So what's actually happening behind the scenes is you redeem your points to them at a fixed value, they then purchase that ticket from the airline, okay? So they're basically gonna say, we give you one cent per point, you basically redeem the points to us, and then we'll go buy that ticket and associate your name to it. So they're a travel agency that's existing online, right? Now, when you go to the airline hotel programs, they have a totally different pricing mechanism. That's how this arbitrage exists. They charge based off of the distance you're flying or the region you're flying. For example, if you're flying Emirates from the East Coast to Dubai, it's like, off-peak price, on-peak price, it's one of those two because you're flying from the East Coast to Dubai, okay? So it's not based off of the, the revenue cost of the ticket. So the price may double. And if you go to Amex Travel or Chase Travel, the number of points would also double. But if the price doubles and you go to Emirates and they have the availability, it's not changing at all, right? And so that's the beauty of this game. That's where the arbitrage exists, okay? So let's cover some easy hotel examples and then we'll do some airline ones. Now, this is uh, one of my favorite hotel stays I've ever done. I just was there like uh, two months ago. It's called the Alila Ventana in Big Sur, California. Now, this uh, this hotel is amazing. It's five-star, all-inclusive, like crazy coastline views. It's in the Redwoods. Unbelievably beautiful. You know, most of the suites and rooms have like a hammock and a big porch, un you know, incredible stars. You got a hot tub, um, a jacuzzi outside too. It's like, it's crazy. And so this is normally going to retail for minimum $2,300 per night. Okay, so if you were to go to Chase Travel, that would be 230,000 points per night for that. Okay, but if you convert them to uh, Hyatt, you could book this for 45,000 points per night. So for the same number of points, 230,000 points, if that's what you had in Chase, instead of getting one night here, you could get five. So in other words, instead of getting $2,300, right, you could get close to like, well, my math is 11,500, I think is the, is the math on that. Right. So huge difference. All you did was you took your points, you searched on Hyatt for the same hotel. Boom. You found it. You plug your Hyatt number into the Chase transfer portal, send them over and you book it there. That'll be, you know, that's nine thousand dollars right off of that, right off the bat for one hotel trip. OK, same thing. If you want to go to the Maldives, I know we had some Maldives fans in here. Um, this is a great example. The Park Hyatt Maldives for overwater villas typically retail for about nine fifty. OK, a lot of them are actually even more at other properties, honestly several thousand dollars, but you could get um, this for 30,000 points per night. Okay. And you could get a $950 room, which would normally mean you'd either have to pay 950, you'd have to pay 95,000 points through Chase Travel or Amex Travel, or you transfer your Chase points to Hyatt. Boom, 30,000 points per night. Okay. Now this is another example. If you went to Hyatt Regency in Miami, not a crazy fancy hotel, pretty standard hotel, honestly. Um, it's downtown, great in Brickell, like good area, but you know, it's nothing nuts. 12,000 points can get you a $514 room, $514 room. So in that, in that example, that would normally be 500, uh, or sorry, 51,000 points per night, right? And you're using only 12,000 points to get that. So you get, you know, four nights basically for the price of one, if you were to do that. So um, business travel, stuff like that, you know, that's a great example there. It doesn't have to just be some crazy, you know, luxury high-end experience. That's what I like to show because that's more fun. And it also, uh, you know, gives you bigger ideas of like, if you want to save your points for bigger trips, what could you do that would be bucket listers? Things that when you look back 10, 20, 30 years down the line, you're like, that was awesome. That's kind of the goal for me. And when we talk about what we can do with this. 
Another example, this was another high uh, state. This is in Sardinia, Italy, amazing island off the coast of Italy. Um, and so here, right, we ended up booking, uh, uh, my girlfriend and I went out, this is last year, but we went over and we got four nights here. So the retail rate for a room here was about $3,000. And then you add in like breakfast and all that stuff is going to be $13,000 for this two bedroom kind of villa suite. Now I booked a base category room that retailed for about 1800. Okay. And when I did that, I only had to use, uh, it was what, 35,000 points per night. So I used 35,000 points per night. So it was 140,000 points total. I then booked it. I got upgraded into the suite because I have status with Hyatt. So I used points and status. And then I got a $13,000 hotel stay. Okay. So I got 9.2 cents for each point, which is crazy good value. Really good. But the the awesome part is, again, 140,000 points for, for most people would be about $1,400. I just got $13,000 out of the same points because I strategically earned status by just spending on the right cards. And then I use those points well. So a couple of small tweaks, again, to the money you're already spending, to the hotel stays you're already making can yield some pretty awesome results for you. Okay, I'll do one more example um, for myself here. And this was on Emirates First Class. I mentioned that shower on board. They also have a bar, which is a really cool experience. Um, I actually had a group of 25 uh, friends that we I threw a, an event in France. We had 25 people fly over and we kind of took over the bar on the flight, which was cool. Um, but this would have been a $14,500 ticket one way in first class. So if I was going to go to Amex Travel, it'd be 1.45 million points. Okay. When I transferred the points, I got it for 136000 It's a phenomenal deal. Phenomenal deal. Okay. So I got over 10 cents for each point. Um, and this is the last one. This was uh, my business partner went over to Asia and uh, they flew Japan Airlines one way and then ANA on the phone. Uh, on the way back and got an incredible deal. So this is like one of the most epic things that uh, that you could do. But for two people, round trip first class for these tickets, it would have been close to $50,000, right? They ended up using 246,000 points. So normally you would have had to use nearly 5 million points through Amex or Chase Travel. He used 246,000. That's wild, right? I mean, even if you're spending $10,000 a month, you'll easily generate that in a year. And this is a case where he used um, you know, that kind of point value to get almost $50,000. So it's a great example. And I don't want to pretend like that's an everyday thing, but it is very much possible. We have clients that are doing that kind of stuff too, but you'll see going back to that initial kind of metric we did early, right? I told you guys to aim to get three cents for each point. This example was nearly 20. This one was 10. This one was nine, right? So you're just trying to get, you know, three, which is much, much more reasonable and easy. So that's kind of the, the idea here. Um, now, if you do this right, like this is just a kind of an example of like what it looks like to do it over the course of a year. This is one of the clients we work with who um, we ended up getting him. It was basically $104,000 of travel. He paid um, about $4,000, $5,000 in taxes and fees for those trips out of pocket. That's all he paid though. And he would have had to use around 10 million points. We used 1.2 million and got him $99,000 in savings. So his options were pay basically 104 k pay 10.4 million points, which he didn't have, or use 1.2 million to get the same travel. So we were able to help him ratchet up his points and do that. So that's kind of what's possible. If you have a few big international trips a year, like this guy's obviously traveling a lot to people, business in first class, it's a good amount. But the point is, is I just want to show you examples that really give your mind a clear way to be like, this can save me a lot of money because this is in this was in the course of a year, right? So if you have a few of those years in a row, it's like a lot of opportunity, a lot of experiences that you can unlock. So um, what do I think about Brex, Sue? Uh, Brex, I like for the systems that they have. And guys, feel free to light up the chat. Um, I will answer as we go if it's appropriate or we'll come to them at the end. Brex, I like for the system. They used to have a good points earning system too. Um, they no longer really have a great system for, for, for earning points really effectively. So I don't use them anymore. But um, I, uh, I, I am a fan for just like how they have their their card set up and the structure of it. And the fact that they do have some points that can transfer is, is actually great too. It's just little known, so I didn't include it in this, but that's actually a good one. If you do have some points there, you could use that. So happy to answer any more questions about that one later on too. Um, here's a couple steps to systemize things and, and, and save some time and headache. So one thing is as you get more cards, like you don't have to have a, a bunch to do this. I always recommend two to three personal, two to three business. It's great, that's, that's fine. If you wanna go crazy, you can, but you don't need to. But you want to change your payment due dates across all of your accounts to the same date, right? So 
Um, if you are basically, you know, have you have six cards and they all are all due on the 28th, great. You log in once per month on the 27th, you log into your three different banks, you pay your six different cards. Um, ideally you set up auto pay. You should definitely have that set up too. So you have at least a minimum payment down. And then that will basically make sure that you're you're good to go. You never have any late payments, which is obviously a big headache if you have that. Um, the next thing would be to uh, track your cards. So we do have some Google Sheet tools we could send you if you're interested in that. But really the best app for this is going to be card pointers. If you want to load your cards in there and see what kind of benefits you have, which cards have annual fees, how to maximize those, which cards are great for certain purchases, card pointers is the best app. Highly recommend. Um, next one is you want, if you want to track your points, uh, something like Award Wallet or TripIt Pro would be very helpful for you. It'll aggregate all of your points across all your loyalty accounts into one place. So you can see how many Delta miles, how many American miles, how many Hilton points, how many Marriott points. Log in, you see them all, wonderful, right? So definitely um, recommend that. And then if you want help searching stuff, uh, flightconnections.com and point.me are, are probably your two best tools. Um, nothing's perfect for that. There's a lot of kind of clunks in the system with those, but that's the best you got when it comes to online searching. And of course, if you have interest in, in reaching out to us, um, you know, that's not the point of this call, but we, we can definitely help you guys out with that too. Um, one second here while I just take a sip of water. So we'll get into some easy wins here to wrap things up from the content side. And then I want to hear more of your questions. Okay. So if you live near a Southwest hub, this is awesome. Okay. I'm in Austin. I actually don't like flying Southwest that much, but some people love it. And if you live near a Southwest hub and you fly consistently with a partner, this you need to pay attention to. There's a thing called the Southwest Companion Pass where you can basically get a buy one, get one free for four years. And here's how you do it. You need to qualify for the companion pass, which um, if someone does want to do this, I'll explain more. But basically, there's two cards you can get that qualify you. You'll get a one companion for the rest of your, your calendar year that you qualify in the entire next 12 months, right? The entire next year. So if you qualified in January 2024, you'd have it for all of 2024 and all of 2025. So that's two years of you flying free. Then after the two years, you flip it. They add you. They qualify and add you. That's four people, or sorry, four years of one person flying free. Okay, they now have routes all over the Caribbean, Central America. They have Hawaii now. No real other international options like Europe and stuff. But still, buy one, get one free. And you can even use points for those. So if I was going to bring my girlfriend, I could uh, I could use points for myself. And then she would come free for two years. It's awesome. Okay, that's a big win. If you want help with that, let me know. Uh, American Airlines, Aviator Red. If you just want the fastest, lowest hanging fruit bonus, this is an easy one. 50,000 point bonus on your first purchase. When I was like, I don't spend that much. How am I going to earn points? I went to 7-Eleven. I got this card. I went to 7-Eleven. I got a Slurpee. I earned 50,000 points. I then flew to Europe like a few months later, completely free. And I was like, this is awesome, right? So um, that's a, that's an easy one, right? A lot of people don't talk about that. If you do happen to follow any other kind of points, blogs or influencers and stuff, because most of their business models are generated around driving affiliate traffic to, to card signups. Ours isn't. So I'm happy to share you what's actually going to work and help you the most. Um, next Hilton diamond status, which is, uh, really easy to get from the Hilton aspire card. Now diamond is the highest possible status that you can get, um, for, for Hilton. And this is the only card that will get you the highest status available just from having a card. Any other card you have to do a certain amount of spend or travel to generate stuff, uh, to, to qualify for this, you just get the card and you get the highest possible status. So, you know, sweet upgrades, uh, free Wi-Fi, early check-in, late checkout, more points when you stay, um, uh, free breakfast, stuff like that. Now, the downside is because it's easier, you know, you're less likely to get upgrades, but still well worth it if you're someone who, who likes Hilton properties, have to get that card. Um, Marriott Platinum, uh, you can get Platinum status at Marriott very easily as well. They have the, the Bonvoy Brilliant card, which will get that for you. And uh, Hyatt tends to be my favorite status, which we can get into if anyone has questions on that. And that's another, there's another fast track for that. In some cases, if you're someone who doesn't have a lot of points and you're doing a big international trip, let's say you were going to Asia, and it's like, ah, I don't have enough points. You can actually look at buying points to uh, then redeem for flight. So there's been oftentimes where we have some clients that are brand new or their credit's not great, so they can't get new cards yet. Well, they may be looking at a ten dollars or $12,000 ticket. With the right strategies, you can buy miles online, legally, ethically, from the airline for $3,000 and then book you know, a ticket that, again, is like ten dollars to twelve k maybe. So that's an awesome strategy in certain situations. It's just good to be aware of that. Um and uh, 
Oh, uh, Jennifer missed the card related point three. It's called the Hilton Aspire card. Aspire, A S P I R E. Okay. Um, next. So everyone here, baseline, like one of the things that if you leave this call and in a month you are still waiting in lines at the airport and you don't have pre check, I have failed you. Okay. So everyone here should be getting clear and TSA pre check completely complimentary. Cards like the Amex Platinum or Business Platinum will get you both. Okay. So um, you can get uh, basically. Uh, yeah, they skip, skip the lines clear at most airports. Usually there's a clear and TSA line where you get both. So TSA, obviously, uh, well, maybe not obvious, but that's a great one because you don't have to take things out of your bag, right? Keep your shoes on, keep your laptops in, keep your toiletries in and clear will actually allow you to skip all the lines and go to the fastest, you know, to the the front of the queue. So if you have both, then you skip the line and you get in faster. Global entry, uh, is great for when you're coming back in the country that has saved my butt several times where I've had like a, um, I flew back from Costa Rica through Atlanta one time and the, the, t- the global entry, uh, customs line, excuse me, the customs line, the standard one was like two hours long. I would have missed my flight guaranteed global entry had four people. <laughs> so it was like a minute and a half. And I was like, Oh my God, thank God. So if you're coming back in the country ever, and particularly if you have connections, you definitely want to have that, uh, strategy to put payroll on a card. There's a lot of ways to do this. If you have questions on it, ask, I'll explain that. And then Lastly, lounge access. Again, similar. Everyone here should be having lounge access when they travel. No questions asked. Most major airports have at least a couple lounges. Priority pass is the easiest, lowest hanging fruit. This is a network of 1,300 worldwide lounges that you can get access to. Um, And that's going to be a benefit. Priority pass is going to be a benefit on a lot of the major higher cards. Chase Sapphire Reserve, Capital and Venture X, Amex Platinum, Amex Business Platinum. Those are all going to come with priority pass, as well as a lot of these cards are, you know, if you're at a uh, if you have like the Amex Platinum and stuff, you'll get into the Centurion lounges, which are great. There's less of them, but they are nice. Um, Chase is starting to open up a few different kind of locations. They have one in Boston, a small thing in Austin. Capital One has one in Dallas. So there's some kind of cool airline or uh, non-airline lounges. And then obviously you've got your airline lounges as well. If you're a frequent flyer on American, it might make sense to get an American airline lounge card as well um, and pay the annual fee for that. So um, what's next? So guys, let's get into your questions. We'd love to support. But um, if you want a one-on-one um, uh, kind of you know private session just for you to learn more about what you're doing wrong, what you're doing right, how to optimize things, we're happy to set up a free consult. This uh, presentation, this conversation today is really just, I'm here to add as much value as I can. But for those that are like, hey, I'd love to learn more about either what you guys do or like, how do I just optimize this? Uh, you can definitely schedule a free consult. We'll put the link down below. And I want to be transparent. You know, you've got myself and Anish on here. Um, these conversations are completely value add. They're not, there's no hard, like veiled pitch or anything like that coming. It's really going to be, let's show you the numbers. Let's break things down for you. If you want to talk more about what we have to offer and stuff, we can do that later on. But this is a, a consultation call that's purely really designed to get you value. Similar to like what today's presentation is about. So with that, guys, um, yeah, so much, yeah, you exactly. Guys. Bottomless that was move awesome. Rizzo. Yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah, you, just going through the chat. Uh, yeah, it looks like we do have a few questions. Um, someone would like you, if you don't mind, to emphasize on how to put payroll on, on a card. Absolutely, yeah. So uh, one of the beauties of this is um, payroll is a pretty big expense. Now, depending on your business, how your your, your team is set up, are they W-2s, 1099s, like what are you doing team overseas? There's a lot of different options. For me, I pretty much have my entire team as, a, as 1099s. So what we'll do is we run things through a um, platform for called Wise. It's formerly TransferWise for international payments. And so what you do is you put your card on there and then you basically select the currency they're going to receive. You send it. You do get charged a, I think it's a 2.85% processing fee. So the math is kind of the key on this, right? It's it's basically what you want to do is you want to say, okay, if I'm going to spend 2.85%, how am I going to generate more back? Well, for me, I have a card that earns two points per dollar. An example would be the Amex Blue Business Plus. Um, another example would be the Capital One Venture X for business. And if I were to use either of those cards to, to run payroll, I'm going to earn two points for every dollar. And then I'm getting on average around five cents per point. Okay. So two points per dollar times five cents per point is 10% back. So every dollar that I spend on payroll, I'm getting 10% back. I'm paying 3% in fees. So I'm yielding about 7% of savings. So that works really well for me. Most people that do this, they're going to put it on a card that earns one point per dollar. They're going to go to Amex Travel and get one cent per point. And so they're going to pay 3%, earn 1%, and they're going to lose two. So you don't want to do that. Um, so you have to just know which cards to use. It can be also a great way. A lot of cards, a lot of airlines and stuff will um, 
require a certain amount of spend to hit status. So sometimes if you want to just rack up a lot of spend to hit your status and it's worth that that amount of processing fees, it can be a benefit to you. If you travel like a lot on American, you can spend your way to the status on American. So that's another option. But the numbers are the key. So transferize is one tool. Um, Plastique, P-L-A-S-T-I-Q. I'll put those in the chat as well. Um, would be another one. And then another one would be like Melio. There's a couple others out there as well. But those are some ones that you'd want to turn to for payroll. So I'll put wise.com. But the most important part, even PayPal, if you're doing um, if you're doing uh, 1099s, it just depends again on what your system is. If you have like Gusto set up and stuff like that, uh, or you're using like ADP, it's a little bit more complicated to switch away from those. But uh, you could maybe do a couple of your large vendors like this, depending, maybe purchase inventory in large chunks where it's $50,000 purchase orders. They want ACH check or wire only. You could use something like Plastique for that. And then you just pay like that only and you don't do payroll. So it works for things that aren't payroll too. It's basically anything that's not typically on a credit card. So. Whoop, awesome. Yeah. That's great. Um, the next question someone is asking, can you explain how to get the priority pass if they already have a Capital One card? Yeah. So you got to have a card that has priority pass as a benefit on it, which is gonna be the Capital One Venture X. So if you have the Capital One Venture card, um, I'll double check, but I don't think that one actually has priority pass. So that's number one. Um, the best way to do this is going to be like, if you just Google how to activate priority pass, cause it's kind of, there's a few steps. So there's like screenshots online, but how to activate priority pass for X card, put that in. You're going to go to a, a website that's going to just have screenshots and steps. But basically the synopsis is you're going to activate it on their website on the priority pass site. And then what's going to happen is you're going to get something in the physical mail, what takes like a week or two weeks. That's going to have like an activation code. And then you use that. It's kind of silly to me that in 2023, they're sending a two week, you know, physical snail mail uh, letter to you to in order to activate that. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but that's how it works. So um, yeah, that's what I recommend for that. But again, just make sure your card that you actually have with Capital One gets it. It's not every Capital One card. Okay, perfect. Um, next question is, how do you access the transfer portal? So uh, great question. So basically... What you're going to do, it depends on which um, bank you're with. Like Chase, for example, not every card can transfer out to um, can transfer out to the airlines and hotels. Only uh, the Chase Sapphire Reserve, Chase Sapphire Preferred, or Chase Inc. Preferred have that. So for Chase, for example, if you have like a Chase Freedom or Chase Inc. Unlimited, you can combine your points and move them to one of the cards that can transfer out, and then you can transfer from there. For Amex, they're all going to pull together, and there's just going to be a, a place in your travel portal that says... Um, basically transfer to airline partners. So that's ultimately going to be the kind of the, the shortest answer I can give. I'm going to see if I can try and find uh, like a way to do that real quick. I can maybe screen share for you guys, but um, that's going to be the main way. Now, the other factor of this is that you do need to have, if you're going to transfer, you need to have your airline or hotel loyalty program, like the, the loyalty number preset up and it needs to match exactly with what the bank says. If you have like a name change, you got married or something, and uh, and you you have a different name in your bank than you have on the airline program. There may be some issues, so you definitely don't want to uh, run into that. But let me just see here. I can actually just screen share and show you guys exactly what it looks like. Um, okay, so I'm a little shy of my point stash right now because I just redeemed a bunch, so don't judge me. Um, but uh, no, jokes aside, uh, so basically if you're in here, let me just move this down. This is like the Chase Ultimate Rewards Hub, right? So... There's going to be, oh, actually just change it. Travel, transfer points to partners, right? So you go here and you can see sometimes they have tra what we call transfer bonuses, which is an amazing time. Like if I was going to fly to the UK, I would be looking to fly Virgin and leveraging this 30% bonus because maybe maybe the flight is going to cost 100,000 Virgin miles. Well, I would only need to transfer like, what is it? Like 70 something thousand uh, chase points into Virgin to now book that. Okay, same with flying blue for Air France. So um, you'll see these bonuses, they come up periodically. And then all you're going to do is go down and let's say you were going to transfer to Aer Lingus, which I would almost never recommend, but it is an option. You would basically just go in here and then hit transfer points. And then it's going to have you put your Aer Lingus uh, loyalty number in here. And then um, typically they transfer pretty quickly. Sometimes it's instant. Sometimes it's a couple hours. In some rare cases, some of the programs will take a day or two. So you just want to make sure that you know you're going to book that flight or that hotel because once you transfer your points over, you can't convert them back. Okay, so it's a one-way transfer. So if you transfer them and then it gets booked, 
you know what? You're going to have to let them sit there until your next one. So that is um, something to be aware of for sure. So I don't even really recommend like speculatively transferring because there's a bonus. I always recommend just do it when you have like an actual trip coming up. Perfect. Okay. Um, the next question is, why do you like Hyatt the most? Ah, what do I like Hyatt? So out of the hotel programs, they have the best point value by far. Like I showed you that example where I got nine cents per point. You will never, ever in a million years see that with Marriott or Hilton. Like you just won't. Marriott and Hilton have both inflated their points currencies. And what happens is they they still give you a one-to-one -one transfer ratio. So you can convert, I'll use Chase as an example. Chase is partners with, with both Hyatt and Marriott, okay? I can convert my Chase points at a one-to-one -one ratio to Hyatt or to, to Marriott. It's one-to-one. -one. Now, with Marriott, a $500 hotel room uh, may cost like 80 or 90,000 points. With Chase, the same hotel might be like 20 to 30,000 points. It's just how their pricing chart works, but the one-to-one -one ratio is where the difference is made. So that's number one. Their pricing is way better. Number two, I think their quality of experience is phenomenal and very consistent. Like if you go to an Ondas property or what I really like, I just did two out in California, the Alila properties. There's only a couple in the States and then the rest are in like Asia. They're awesome. Um, Park Hyatt is an amazing brand experience as well. And uh, the benefits are really good too. So if you get globalist status, which you can get, just by spending alone, you get a lot of really good upgrades, which they honor. You get, and they get like the free breakfast. It's a, it's a great program for that overall. And I think there's less competition there too. When you travel at Marriott, it's a glow, you know, you have the benefit of it's the biggest global footprint of a hotel brand. So you have the most options, but I tend to see a lot of inconsistency in the brand. And I tend to see a lot of the uh, benefits don't get honored as much because there's a lot more people competing for it. So those are my thoughts. Okay, great. Um, and then I know that time is getting close. We we still have quite a few questions in the chat. So those mm -hmm. who need to hop off, of course, feel free to do yeah. so. But I'm if, happy to stay um, as long as you're need, okay Skyler. staying on. Okay, yeah. perfect. Um, so the next question is, what's the purpose in shifting all, all of your credit card payments on the same date? Yeah, so it's just for simplicity. Um, no other reason than if you're someone that like, is like, if I have four cards and how am I going to remember is this is the 13th, this one's the 12th, and this is... If you have it all in one day, I like to keep things systemized and simple. So I can log into all my bank accounts. I have, I don't recommend this to you guys if you, unless you want to go, you know, become a points nerd, but I have like 40 different cards, right? My credit score is still great because a lot of them are business cards, which don't show up on your personal credit report. I've done this very strategically. I, I clearly know what I'm doing here, but um, I can log in and in 30 minutes a month, manage all that. All right, I got one spreadsheet. I have like a couple different logins for the different banks, which I use apps to log in. And since it's all on the same date, I don't really have to worry about like all these different times, right? So that's that's a really helpful thing. Um, so that's that's really why. Okay, um, the next question says, any advice on how to get the best credit cards without the $500 plus fees? Seems like the best cards have a high annual fee. Any way to get around it? Uh, yeah. So, so basically when it comes to annual fees, the first thing I like to say is think of it as what's the ROI. Don't just look at the expense. Cause if you have an annual fee credit card, like the capital one venture X, when it first came out was, uh, it was three ninety five. but off the bat, you got a $300 travel credit. You then got lounge access. You then got, um, another $200 like VRBO or Airbnb credit. You then got TSA pre-check and global entry. You also got present circle with Hertz. And when you look at all those things and then you got the sign up bonus, it's like, that is, I mean, just from those perks alone, if you use them, that's over a thousand dollars. So you want to be making sure to think about that. What happens though, is if you do get multiple high-end cards, you might have priority pass on your chase card, your Amex card and your capital one card. And you're like, well, I can't use all those. So what do I do? So in that case, oftentimes you might get a card for a bonus and then downgrade it after a year. If you have overlapping benefits or you're not seeing the, the annual return. So the downgrade path is one. You could also cancel, of course, um, or ask them to negotiate and waive it. So if you're going to ask them to negotiate and waive it, you need to basically explain, hey, I haven't been getting the value out of it. They're going to want to see that you're spending on it fairly consistently. In some cases, they're going to give you that retention offer. They're going to say, hey, spend on this. We'll give you an extra 20,000 points. Let's say you value points at three cents each. You'll know, okay, that's basically $600. The fee is $295. That's a positive $400 decision for me. Great. So that's how you think about it there. Um, but when it comes to 
Uh, the downgrade option, that can be a good one too if you want to keep the credit line and the history open and you don't want to continue to pay that annual fee. So those are your best paths. Um, get the value, uh, try and negotiate it and waive it, downgrade it. Those are kind of your three ways that, to handle that. Great. Um, our next question says, are best points per ticket found in booking direct with the airline or via card travel services? Yes. So basically the car travel services, I would imagine you mean like the travel portal uh, for whoever's asking that. So it's going to, it does depend. Like there are some times we're going to chase travel or Amex travel will get you better value. That is pretty much only going to be on cheap domestic economy tickets. Okay. Like when the, the cost is lower, otherwise the whole transfer thing is going to typically end up being better value. Um, so it, if you're using points, that's what you want to do. If you're paying cash, I always recommend, unless you're going for top level status, to go ahead and um, book right through like the travel portal. Because if you have a chase card and you go use the chase card through chase travel, you're going to earn like five points per dollar. Whereas if you use that on the airline site, you might only earn three. Okay. So that is typically going to be your best bet if you're purchasing the tickets and you don't care about the status benefits. If you're trying to accrue status or like earn specific miles, then one of the best things you could do is going to be to get a co-branded airline card, like get a United card and, and buy it on United site. So hopefully that makes sense too. Definitely. Um, you mentioned round the world tickets. Where are those offered and which is best? Yeah. So the round the world tickets, it's a tricky thing. Um, but basically it's going to be with, uh, it's going to be with ANA is the only way to do it. And it's extremely nuanced. It can be done, but I would, uh, I'll just drop a link here for you guys. If you want to see like some, some cool stuff, um, I will here, I'll put this in real quick. Um, there's just a lot of rules. So like, for example, you have to be able to find the award space, which means like the the the, the seat has to be available. Um, there's certain kind of distances that will charge you into different tiers, but you can do it as low as for a couple hundred thousand points and go around the world in business or first class. One of the nuances of it is that you have to keep going in the same direction. So if you started in, in Austin, I have to go to California, then I have to go to like Japan, then I have to keep going maybe to like Dubai and then to Europe and then back to the States. I can't go like Austin to New York to California to to Japan to Hawaii because that's going back and forth. So there's some funny nuances and rules about it. If you are someone that's really interested in that, check out a guide like that or reach out to us because you definitely need to. I would not try to do that on your own. You need to talk to someone who can really help you because it's even for someone like me, it takes a lot of effort to piece together. Okay. Um, next question is, what was the Hyatt status fast track method you mentioned? Mm. Yeah, so this is going to be for um, high spenders or if you can you know, generate payroll and stuff on your card, it can be worth it depending on your value that you're going to get back. But you can spend your way to top status with Hyatt. You have to basically, to get Hyatt Globalist or highest status, you have to spend six, you have to earn 60 nights, okay? So basically you could stay. Sometimes they run promotions where they'll give you double nights per night stay, which is cool. Um, and the other way is to spend your way there. So for every $10,000 that you spend, you're going to earn five nights. So if you spent $120,000 on the co-branded Hyatt business card, you're going to earn 60 nights right off the bat. And there, there's your globalist status. So it's a great, for someone that's spending enough, like, you know, if you spent 10K a month, you could technically do it. That would be all of your spending would go on that card. So you would have to decide, okay, do I want to use points for flights instead? Is globalist worth it? That kind of thing. But otherwise, it's a great, great strategy. Okay. Um, I think that we hit the end of our questions. Um, yeah, so it looks like cool. looks like we can end it here. Like I said, um, we can share this presentation with anyone interested. And Emily, if you want to post that link in the chat to this Calendly link one more time, you can schedule a, a meeting to discuss more with Eli and his team. Um, but with that, we'll end up the recording. And thank you everyone for joining. And mostly thank you to Eli and Anish for being here today. Yeah, thank you all for for having us on. Um, again, on Instagram, we're posting all sorts of of fun kind of live travel stuff. Uh, so definitely, just go ahead and check it out. Just I would browse through it, see what's there. If it, if it interests you, hit follow and and follow along for the journey because I do a lot of how tos on this as well. Um, again, you got the link to set up a conversation with us. Hopefully, you took away some things that were tangible, eye opening, and actionable. And uh, really appreciate. Uh, your team, Skylar and, and Tian and, and Emily and everybody here to, to make this happen for, for all of us. And so thank you guys and looking forward to hopefully chatting with, uh, with the rest of you guys soon. Thanks.